What's up, y'all? We're actually here with Bram Balducci's third house hack. It's actually really sick because initially I thought the numbers were going to be, you know, looking pretty good based on what other house hacks I've seen and what other ones that we've toured. But in actuality, the numbers look sick. So you got to stay until the end because he goes over all the numbers, what the management is, what that's all like, and check it out. It's a pretty good looking property. So let's go inside and Brian will guide the rest. What's up, Ian? Welcome to my crib. This is my five bedroom, two bath house hack in Lakewood. We're gonna go through it now. Uh, yeah, so I actually have the tenants do the landscaping. Um, as you can tell, they, they don't do the weeding very well, but they do mow, um, so that's awesome. Uh, there are better ways to do that. You could hire a landscaper. Um, the tenants were okay with, with doing the mowing, so um, I left it to them. So we are right at Mississippi and Sheridan. Um, right on the corner, so we're about 15 minutes from the mountains and about 15 minutes from downtown. It's a great location, um, very central. Uh, it's a pretty clean, quiet area, and uh, it's right next to Belmar Mall. So I did install a smart keypad entry. Uh, you don't have to deal with keys for each tenant. Um, you just give them the code, and then you can change that code um, once people leave. So this is the first living room here. We've got three bedrooms, one bath upstairs, a two bedroom, one bath downstairs two common spaces like this. There are five people living here. So three up here, one bathroom between three people. Would be better to have an extra bathroom, but it works out. So yeah, this is a rent by the room situation. So each person has a separate lease and utilities are included. So here's the kitchen right here. So there are five people that share this kitchen. So that can be difficult, especially with the fridge with five people packing their stuff in there. So we, I do have an extra fridge in the garage. I think that's very helpful just for extra frozen goods. Um, you know, if somebody shops at Costco, that's definitely gonna take a lot of storage. Um, for the most part, um, they clean it decently well, but I do have a cleaner. It's a monthly cleaner. Um, I would even recommend doing bi-weekly cleanings and just uh, paying for that and including it in the rent. So I think that's a great method just because the cleaning schedule can get difficult and uh, having each tenant clean, um, they're all gonna have different ideas of what clean is to them. So here's the garage where the extra fridge is. Now the rest of this is just storage. Um, so I do advertise that the tenants will have plenty of storage. Um, they have this garage to store their stuff and they also have the shed in the back. I think that's huge, especially when you're having five people in the house. For the most part, I've had a, a good time with tenants, but I have had a tenant that did not work out at this house. And so I did have to force him out of the property. Um, it went well, I gave him a 25 day notice and he left in 20 days. Um, I did move him to another rental property and he didn't work out there either. So it's really important that you find uh, like-minded people uh, that are gonna work well together, um, make sure that they're clean, make sure that they're friendly. And uh, some of that is just finding out the hard way, unfortunately. So this is my backyard. This is another common area. Um, really dig this awning. A lot of the tenants really like that because you can sit out here when it's raining, when it's snowing. Um, it's big green grass, uh, nice shed in the back. So I really like this backyard. It's, it's perfect uh, for the tenants. All right, so now we're going down to the basement. It's a two bedroom, one bath. It's got a nice common space right here. That way the, the two tenants down here have their own area to relax. Uh, they don't have to go upstairs to the, the common area upstairs. And then we have our first bedroom right there. And our second bedroom is over here along with the bathroom. So I didn't have to do much to this bathroom. I did replace this vanity, but that was it. Um, it's pretty much ready to go when I moved in. So over here, we also have the utility area. Um, I did have to replace this water heater. Um, I had a 5 p.m. call um, for one of my tenants that there was no longer hot water. So I don't know exactly what happened with this tank, but I did have to replace it for about 1600 bucks. It's working great now. Yeah, I don't get calls very often at all. Um, I think this was like one of the few calls that I've gotten. I've never had a call to fix a toilet or do anything of the such. So um, this, was, this was the main call that I got. Um, time spent on this rental is maybe an hour a month. So why rent by the room? 
Well, if I was to rent this property to just a family, I'd maybe get about 2,600 per month. Renting it out by the bedroom, I am pulling in about 4,000 per month. So my expenses on this property are about 2,600. With uh, utilities, um, reserves, uh, maintenance, everything, CapEx and uh, vacancy, I'm pulling in about 1,200 per month on this property. So that's 800 per room and utilities are included. The main management I do on this property is weatherizing. So um, once it's close to summer, I'll activate the swamp cooler. And then once it's getting close to winter, I will take down the swamp cooler and blow out the sprinklers. So that's pretty much it. And then I have a cleaner that comes here once a month and she pretty much just comes on her own. So I don't really have to manage that too much. Um, but yeah, I spend maybe one to two hours per month, if even that, on this property. So this was my third house hack. I bought this as a primary. I did 5% down, so it came out to about 25K down um, with a 3% interest rate. So not bad. Uh, I purchased it for $420,000 and then I had a $5,000 concession from the seller. So 415 and it's now worth probably about 590. I moved out a year after I purchased it. I purchased it in 2020, uh, July. And then I moved out uh, that, that following 2021 of September. My future plans with this place are to continue to up rents. Right now they are still under rented at 800. Uh, the market rents about 850. So continue to up rents um, as tenants leave. I, I tend to not up the rent until the tenant leaves. In that big common area, I see a potential to split that in half and add an extra bedroom and then an egress as well, um, adding another $800 in income. Uh, to the property. This is a buy and hold. I don't plan to sell this anytime in the near future. Thanks for touring my crib, Ian. Um, I'm also with the Fi team, as long as with Ian. I quit my job uh, just last year and I did two more house hacks after this. So it's definitely helped me gain financial independence. And so, yeah, follow Ian for more on financial independence. Subscribe. He does great videos like this. And uh, we're both on the Fi team. So if you need a realtor, uh, reach out and we'd love to help you out with the house hack. Thanks so much, guys. Puppy in, welcome to my crib. My name is Brian Balducci. <laughs> Puppy in, welcome to my crib. My name is Brian Balducci. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude.